that out. <clears throat> okay, so I give you a big picture of what we need to do today. But before that, okay, I need uh, you to do me a favor. Your handphones, right? Maybe I need you to put your handphones, you, you go, go and get your handphones or whatsoever, which can let you to take a pictures or screenshot. If you're using the laptop, then please make sure you know how to access. If you're using your parents' tablet, then you know how to access, okay? Because today's our duration is just one and a half hours, okay? If it's just one and a half hours, I will go through with you a complete model paper. Kertas satu dan juga kertas dua. So, what we will be learning today is, first thing first, I will tell you about the formats, uh, formats for your exam, Kertas and Kertas Dua. Then after that, we'll go through like the model paper in which we'll start with Kertas Dua dulu. I will tell you about the techniques whenever you are, whenever you are using the, uh, whenever you are doing the karangan. Techniques for the short essays, techniques for the long essay. Then after that, we go through on the Kertas Satu. Okay, Kertas Satu, I, I will not really go through the questions one by one with you. I will roughly go through with you the entire papers and also tell you some technique on how are you going to do your, uh, how you're going to present your answers when it's like subjective questions or maybe it's uh, the novel questions and the rumusans and the ringkasans in your bahagian seat. So it's basically it's about all the technique. Okay, because if it's an EC, how do we get to the ringkasans, the rumusans, everything we will do it during the class. So seminars, I will teach you about the technique. Okay, <coughs> so look at the question now. I mean, look at the paper. And then, since this is a model paper, so you will need an answers, right? Whenever you finish your model paper, where you can get the answers from? from the QR code here. You may scan the QR code and then get the answers from this QR code. Of course, it's after the seminar, my dear. <clears throat> okay, so please make sure there is a electronic devices that you are able to access. Okay, screenshots. How to screenshots by using your laptop, tablet, or maybe your smartphone. But please make sure one thing. Uh, when you are screenshots, right, you are like, just take picture. Uh, you will not screenshot in this way. Uh. You will not screenshot in this way, uh, okay? So make sure you're not playing your phone now. Huh? All right. So look at your format. Format that is to kertas satu dan juga kertas dua, right? So untuk kertas satu, kamu ada tempo hujan sebanyak satu jam. Yang ni kertas, maka jumlah 60 maka. And it will like split into three parts, A, B and C. So for A is the OAK. OAK which means the objective question, multiple choice question, objective and the couple they So for this one, there will have few categories. The first category is the system bahasa. System bahasa is all about tata bahasa, which is your grammar. System bahasa is all about tata bahasa. Huh? Then after that is the pertikan umum and komsas. Pertikan umum and komsas, this one is the pemahaman. Okay, you will need to read the pertikan events and then to choose the correct answer berdasarkan pertikan. So this is actually the pemahaman. Okay, and then, right, Kamsas, you know why, because for each form, you will have two small booklets for your BMs. One is the novel, like for your form two, your novel is Maniti Impiat. Okay, and then the other booklets is all the prosa, puisi, saja, shail, or this one. And then, how is this 20 questions it will mean from Tadiri Dari Pada, System Bahasa for Shia Devil, okay? There is two different types. Right? The first one is either 15 questions from the system bahasa, five questions from the concepts. The second option, the combinations, it will then come to 13 questions from the system bahasa, four questions from the pertikan umum. And this pertikan umum is just a general passage where the where teachers will get it from the Dewan's Bahasa dan Pustaka, which is a government's uh, government's websites, government departments uh, in which they will have a lot of shail, sajat, and all the passage over it, articles over it. And then the rest is the concepts. So it's either your teachers will come in this, come out the questions in this way or this way. Okay, they suit that. But no matter how in conclusions, 20 questions for your bahagian A, maksudnya ada 20 maka untuk objective aneka pelihat. Okay, then for bahagian B. Hi Alice, I just noticed you're in the class. Okay, so for bahagian B. Bahagian B, this one is a subjective question. Huh? Objective pelbagai bentuk. 
So the subjective question, there is three parts, three questions, okay? System bahasa, pemahaman pertikaan, and the novel. For this system bahasa, when they usually will tell you, they will split into two. One is the kesalahan ejaan, spelling error. The other one is the kesalahan bahasa. <clears throat> Okay, kesalahan ejaan spelling error. For example, uh, let's say right now I want to say rumah. Rumah is means R-U-M-A-H ma. But if the exam come out like rumo, R-U-M-O-H. So you know that this is the kesalahan ejaan. You need to change it from O to A. This is spelling error. Kesalahan bahasa. Kesalahan bahasa, which example I give my previous class here. Okay, pada setiap minggu or di setiap minggu. It's very obvious that is. Pada setiap minggu, each way. Because D, we will only use, use it for tempat. Di rumah, di sekolah, di hospital. It will never be D setiap minggu, right? So you know that's okay. What if the questions come out? D setiap minggu, you need to change the D to pada. This is kesalahan bahasa. And there were things in your system bahasa, which is the peri bahasa. Okay, one thing in the system bahasa, peri bahasa. This is the first question in Bahagian B. And then the second question, pemahaman. This pemahaman is very easy because you can get the answers berdasarkan pertikan. The first two questions will always be like berdasarkan pertikan. So you just read the generous articles that given, the general passage, and then abstract the information from the pertikan. And then the third question, which is under pemahaman pertikan, there is like one, two, three. A sub-question, one, two, three. So for the sub-question number three, that one is pay part, okay? So this is where you will get a pay part question. Pay part is about like four marks, usually three to four marks. And then pay part is very, very, very easy because there will not be a definitely correct and definitely wrong answer, but it depends on how you're going to write that. Pay part is just your own idea. If you are able to write out karangan, so this is very easy for you. And let's come to novel. Novel is a 10 marks question. For your novel, they will give you a general statement and ask you to do the question and ask you to choose, pick whichever novels that you write because you will have different zones. There is like four different zones. So for like Bilaya Persekutuan, Putrajaya, Nilai, they are sharing the same novel. So let's say Sarawak, Johor, the novel that they study is totally different from yours. So there is a techniques whenever you are answering for novel. The first sentence you must include that by saying which novels that you've read. Okay, this is a compulsory. If you never read that sentence out, it is a possible and your teacher have the right to not give you any single marks out of the 10 marks, okay? Your teacher has the right to do so, yeah? So this is the question three. Later, I will show you the sentences that you must include whenever you are answering for the novel question. All right, then we come to bagian C. This bagian C, right now you are in from two. This UASA format, uh, the government changed it last year. If I'm not mistaken, it's on June, okay? When you are in Form 1, they changed the formats already. Last time, Rikasan, Shrumusan, and Ulasan, they will come out from this tree. They will come out two out of this tree uh, in your bahagian C. You will never know which will be coming out. And then you just choose one to do it. But right now, they just split it. Form 1 is ringkasan. Form 2, ringkasan, rumusan. Form 3 is ringkasan and unasan. <laughs> this is the pattern set by the government. Okay? But if there is Catholic students here, please be reminded that is there a possibility that your teachers might come out with lesson to test you? For Form 1, although it's already stated only ringkasan, but my student told me that their students tell them Yes, there is school lessons coming out in the exam. So you know which school you are in. Huh? Okay, so today we are be learning about the Rinkasan and Rumusan as in the technique. I know you know Rinkasan is very easy, but Rumusan also. Okay, Rinkasan and Rumusan basically is just about the summary. The only difference is one with pengenalan and penutup, the other one without. Later, I will show you what is the difference. So, this is basically your kertas satu. Sila habiskan semua dalam tempo satu jam. Okay? Then, we come to kertas dua. 
Kertas dua ada sejam 30 minit. For this one, there is two sections. Bahagian A and bahagian B. For bahagian A, this is a compulsory question. You got no choices. And this is very, very, very easy for bahagian A because it is just about like fill in the blanks. Isi tempat kosong. Later, I will show you why I say it's very easy. Okay? There is no choices for you to choose that. Only one and it's compulsory. And that's for B. B, this one is karangan umum. Karangan umum, you will have three questions given in the exam. And then out of these three, you just choose one to answer it. Please remember, you have only one hour, 30 minutes. You will got no time to do all the three questions. Huh? So please don't do all the questions. Only one question is needed. And then, since there is, uh, since there is like choices, meaning to say you will have a technique to choose the question. And what is the techniques we usually use to choose the question? First step, first, TKK, topic, kata kunci format. So later I will tell you the techniques when we are doing the current. Okay, so this is your kertas dua. So far, kertas satu and kertas dua about the formats, okay, regarding the format. Huh? Is there any questions you want to clarify? Anything you would like to ask? If no, then I will move on. Nothing, yeah? Okay, then let's move on. Okay. <clears throat> For the nota, seminar notas, we did include two tema, the utamakan keselamatan and also selamat datang ke Malaysia. Selamat datang ke Malaysia is basically about the sector pelancongan, about tourism. So I will focus on the utamakan keselamatan because I need a sample to show you on the technique. Okay, I need a sample to show you on the technique. Huh? So for the reps, whenever you are doing your own revisions, you are doing this set of model paper, you want to get the answers, then you may just scan the QR codes. And if you wanted to write the karangans, you want to, someone's check for you, mark for you, then just WhatsApp me. Okay? I'll give you my number first, huh? in case I forgot later. But when you WhatsApp me, please tell me who are you if you are my assisting students, which branch of you and which form of you, okay? But if you are students from seminar, then you just tell me you are students from seminar. Okay, so right now, let us start with Kertas Dua Dudu. Kertas Dua, which is the short essay and the long essay. So right now, for the short essay, yeah, Tema utamakan keselamatan and that lengkapkan karangan pendek di bawah berdasarkan maklumat yang diberikan. It can call karangan pendek, it can also call karangan respon terhad. Berdasarkan maklumat yang diberikan, panjangnya karangan anda hendaklah antara 50 hingga 80 patah perkataan. Kena, this is the word limit between 50 to 80 words. Okay, why I say this is very easy is because for your a uh, karangan pendek, how many paragraphs you need to write, there is three types of digits. You can either write one, three, or five, okay? Three also correct. It depends. One, three, five. Okay, so out of this one, three, five, what is the difference? And how should I split into one, three, five? I mean like three and five. So it will usually start up with the pengenalan, introduction, Isi penutup. Pengenalan isi dan juga penutup. Okay, why I never call it as pendahuluan? Because this is a very, very short essay. And then the opening, it's just about like one sentence, it's enough. So I just use the introductions, pengenalan, a brief intro. Okay, instead of like a pendahuluan. Okay, then after that is your content and your closing penutup. If it's a one paragraph, then you just lump sum everything together. Lah. If it's a three paragraph, this is how you should split it. But if it's a five paragraph thingy, it means to say that you will have like three easy. Meaning to say the easy is given in the question that you will split into three. So normally, I will ask my students to do in three. And I will do three paragraphs with you today. 
But you need to check with your school teachers. Uh, if they have any specific preference, then you will need to follow them. If they've got no specific preference, then you may just choose whichever you want. And for the five paragraph, it is possibility that each paragraph, you just have one sentence, okay? It also makes sense. Can I? Then the next one. So this is what we will be doing today. So you see, for this one, you will have pengenalan isi penutup, right? And that's for your isi, isi block. Kalangan pendek, this just case here. Yeah. Everything's given here. We would call them isi tersurat. Isi tersurat means the maklumat yang diberikan dalam soalan. And then so what you need to do is just to combine, connect by using penanda wacana, kata hubung, just to connect all the sentences together to make them become a paragraph. Where do you add? All this space. Okay. All this space here, you just add in one. So first thing first, what we do, we split into like the pengenalan, isi and penutup first. Sekolah institusi, ciri-ciri sekolah selamat, kerajaan. What is the ciri-ciri sekolah selamat? For sure, it's like to have a system kawalan keselamatan. Okay, so you know that one is your isi already. Until this part, this one is pengenalan. This one onwards, it will be easy. So I need to pick and choose which one would be my penutup. Okay, look at the last two. Mengelakkan kemalangan bangunan sekolah alat. Alat, what is the tools here? Sekolah selamat penting suasana yang harmony siap siaga. Siap siaga, it means like you are ready to do anything already. Okay, you are ready. Uh, well prepared. So this is like siap siaga. So over here, how are you going to split the penutup? Okay, sekolah selamat, penting, anti siap siaga. This is penutup. So the rest here is your easy. I will... Mm. What do you mean that add every single... Oh, you mean that to add every single word in between the dash, is it? <laughs> Okay, it depends on huh? if you never add the terms and it also makes sense to a sentence, it's okay. Okay, it's okay. Not necessary. Okay, it's okay. But usually, it will not make sense by doing that. Okay, let me show you why. Remember, just like I told you, I need you to prepare your smartphones and be ready to access. Yes, because I don't want you to copy that. I don't want to waste your time one and a half hours. So the main things today is about the techniques, how we do that. So I need you to understand. So screenshots, everything's out. But please make sure and please promise me that your pictures will not kill on or you can copy down after the seminar also. As a recall or revision, so if there is anything, so when you are copying down, so you, you have doubts, you've got questions, you can ask me. Okay. This is my answer. I mean, like, uh, the techniques I'm going to show you. Lah. Okay, anything that I highlighted, this one is the terms that I added, which is like an easy tempat kosong. Fill in the blanks, okay? I, the, the, so sorry. Give me a moment now. I want to make it smaller so that I can show you the big picture. Yeah. Okay. So you see, huh? Sekolah institusi ciri-ciri pihak sekolah. So within the institutions, perlu memastikan. I need to make sure that what the school, they do follow, menepati is like they fulfill, they follow. Ciri-ciri sekolah selamat Kerajaan, by who? Ditetapkan oleh kerajaan. That's it, by the government. So, this is like a few in the black. Then after that, my isi. Yang mana perlu mempunyai sistem kawalan keselamatan? For sure, is the school lah. So, sebuah sekolah selamat patut mempunyai kawalan keselamatan. Then, where do we need a guard? Pengawal, it means the guard lah. Of course, it's your front door of the school. So, pintu utama harus sentiasa dikawasi. The awasi is like being monitored. Just like whenever there is people who wanted to enter your school, they will need to do all the registrations, pendaftaran, right? 
So by who? By this pengawah. Okay, which is the gut. Selain menjalankan rendaan kawasan, seterusnya, all the classes where they need to have pelan arahan dan tempat berkumpul. Okay, over here is typo. Ah. This is not lying. Lintas is lalu lintas. Remember, lalu lintas is a walkway. Mark. Remember that whenever there is a fire demonstrations in your in your in your school, there will be like rain, and then everyone's going need to follow the instructions. Go down to the fields of your school. Yeah, this is some things like that. Okay, kawalan lalu lintas. Why is it they need to have this? Juga perlu dijalankan bagi mengelakkan sebarang kemalangan. This something itu what you need to add it. Penanda wacana. Because this is easy mah. So you just add in a penanda wacana to connect all the easy together. Okay. So this is the alat. Alat pemadam kebakaran. It means a fire extinguisher. Alat pemadam kebakaran. Lastly is your penutup. Just fill in the blanks. You may use konklusinya, kesimpulannya, tegasnya, tuntasnya. Okay. It means like in short conclusions. Sekolah selamat amat penting. Dalam menujudkan apa suasana yang harmoni dan siap siaga dalam apa apa yang apa apa situasi apa apa yang akan berlaku. So this is the word limit. That's why I told you for this one it's just about isi tempat kosong sahaja. Okay, hanya isi tempat kosong sahaja. Can boleh faham? Can understand? Okay. So right now. Please take a pictures of this one. Then I wanted to go through with you is the karangans umum. Karangans umum, that one that we will need to have the techniques before we choose the question. I will tell you what is the techniques we use, how are we going to choose the question. And for the pendahuluan, isi and the penutup, how are we going to write it? By telling you the technique and also the contoh so that you can refer. There is a samples for you to do revisions. The picture. Institusi, institu... Institution. Institusi is mean the institution. Okay. Let's move on. Take a picture already. Yeah. Five, four, three. Two, one. Okay. Look at the next one. Chang Chang, this is your karangan umum. Dalam bahagian B, kamu ada tiga soalan. Lepas tu hanya perlu pilih satu. Remember the arahan is very important now. Make sure every time when you do your questions, read the question first. Okay? Read the instruction first. Pilih satu daripada tiga soalan. Lepas tu tidak kurang daripada 180 pada perkataan. Alright. If you are in my class, I will always tell my students. Although the question is telling you that you need to write not less than 180. Yeah? But what is the limit that I set for my student is that please write within 250 until 350. And then 250 is the limit I set for my form 1 students. If you are from Two students, usually I will ask you to try up to 300. Then when you go up to form 3, that is 350. What is the purpose of me doing so? It is because when you go to SPM levels from 4, minimum is 350 that you will need to write. Maximum is up to 500. If you never build up this habit since now, right now, then how are you going to write it up to 350 as minimums when you go to form 4, right? If you just write up to like, 200 plus, 220. Then when you go to from first, suddenly is when you write at least 350. Then die, oh, GG, oh, die together. Oh. After God's your mark, cry together. Oh. Okay? So that's why you will need to build out the habits. Please remember, uh, none of the language you can be last minute. Uh. Language is you cannot last minute, regardless what language. Okay. So this is the given information. Then teacher, is it compulsory for us to include these information in our current umum? It depends. Depends on which question that you choose. Because over here you see, Keselamatan jalan raya semasa musim perayaan, what is the point they give you? Jangan bermain telefon semasa uh, ketiga memandu, patuhi hak laju yang ditetapkan, which is like to follow the, the speed, limit, sentiasa memeriksa dan service engine, berhenti berehat sekiranya penat. Penat, it means letih, tired. 
So all these four points is actually like a cara-cara untuk mengelakkan berlakunya kemalangan jalan raya. Okay, this is how we should avoid the accidents to happen. But then you need to see also whether you are writing any karangan related to the cara-cara or not. Okay. As usual, we will have three questions. How are we going to do to pick the question? First thing first, look at this. Huh? The first part Americans will do karangan is to sum up to find out the TKKF. And what is this TKKF? T we always refer to topic. KK we always refer to kata kunci. And F we refer to format. Okay, choose the TKKF from the questions first. So we look at the question. Pada setiap malam terdapat sekumpulan remaja yang menjalankan aktiviti perlumbaan haram. Haram it means illegal. Perlumbaan it means raising. So it's like a illegal raising. Perlumbaan haramnya. Illegal one L or double L? What L is it? Ini juga mana awak dapat awak? Then after that, oh, I'm correct. Okay, then after that, kawasan tempat tinggal anda it means like uh where where you stay ya? Anda selaku setia usaha as the secretary of persatuan penduduk di kawasan itu, which is like your housing area, the residential areas, for sure, sebab ada own group which is like own persatuan. So, you are the secretaries of that persatuan. They need to untuk menulis sepucut surat aduan. Aduan, it means complaint. Kepada pihak polis mengenai masalah tersebut. Jadi, masalah tersebut, masalah apa? Masalah aktiviti perlumbaan halal. Okay, the masalah is towards this masalah. Tulis surat itu selengkapnya. So, from this one, how are you going to identify the TKKF topic kata kunci and format? We start with the most easiest thing here, which is the format first. Is there any formats you need to write for this essay? Yes, because they already mentioned, tulis surat itu selengkapnya. They ask you to write letter. Okay, they already mentioned that they ask you to write letter. But I got one question for you. For this letter, is this a formal letter or informal letter? Formal letter we call surat rasmi. Informal letter is surat tidak rasmi. So for this question, is this a formal or informal letter that you will need to write? Which one? Nicole, very good. But how do you know is this exactly different? But how do you know? Can Nicole accept it? Okay. Yes, you are correct. So we need to write Surat Kiriman Rasmi, okay, which is Surat Rasmi. Yeah? And why is it Surat Rasmi and not Surat Tidak Rasmi? You need to depend on what kind of letter is this and also who you're writing to. Let's say you are writing a letter, Surat Aduan, to who? Pihak, uh, pihak police. So these are the Formal organizations. Only letters write to friends and family. Ali keluarga, anggota keluarga, kawan-kawan, that is surat tidak rasmi. Informal letter. The rest, formal letter. Okay? So this is because this reason, the format here is surat rasmi. Then the next one. What is the topic here? What is the reason that you are writing out stories? Because there is issues and problems regarding the activity perlumbaan haram. Yes, this is a topic. Okay, so you are writing a complaint letter. Then how about the kata kunci? Kata kunci is something like a factor that you need to write, chara that you need to write, kesan that you need to write, or the tanggung jawab, a masalah, halangan, cabaran, kebaikan. All this is the kata kunci, the keywords what you need to write for your AC. Then, in this question, they just mentions that you want to complain about this issue, full stop. They never specifically mentions what is the exact terms for your kata kunci. So, what happens if they never show you this? You may use a general guideline. And what is a general guideline whenever you are writing for your essay? Now, chew a bit up. I haven't finished up.
It represents Bato, Chara, Usaha, and also Kusan. And the Kusan, it can be Kusan positive and also Kusan negative. It depends on the topic. If, you are, if your topic is Amalam Membaca, Amalam Menabo, so the Kusan that you pick for sure is Kusan positive. Lah. But provided the topic is Amalam Membaca or Menabungnya. Yeah? So for this question, I know that my topic is activity perlumbaan haram. This is not a good activity. And then you are writing a complaints letter. So how are we going to choose? Teacher, how many uh, paragraphs we need to write for this one? Then how many you see we need to write law? Yes. So usually for your karangan, I would say five to six. Why is it five to six? Okay, usually so I will ask students to choose six, but I know some of your school, some of the school, are, they will prefer students to write five paragraphs. Your teachers will specifically mention to you five paragraphs because they want you to write more kuraya, but not all. It depends on the teacher, actually. Yes. So over here, you will have a pendahuluan. Easy. And the penutup. If it's a six paragraph, it means you will have four easy because pendah one paragraph, penutup one paragraph. So this one you will have four easy. Okay. <laughs> this Anna. And as long as you remember, okay? As long as you remember, luckily you direct message me. I was wondering just now, like for quite long already. Why is it these people so quiet? <laughs> okay, now, what should I continue? Uh? Uh, okay, so for this one, uh, we need to write four. Is he right? Four point. So is this Fakal, Chara, Usaha, and Kusans? We need to just write one? No, no. Uh, the max is like you can choose two, but if you want to write all Fakal, all Chara, all Kusans, all so can. Since this is a complaint letter, why you are making complaints for sure is because there is a negative impact. That's why you wanted to make complaints. Mengganggu kehidupan seharian penduduk. So, you are making the complaint. So, we will choose kesan negative. For sure, there is no kesan positive for perlumbaan haram. Ah. And that, since we are telling the impact already, so every time when we wanted to uh, propose some things or to complain some things, we cannot just correct the problems okay you need to think of the solutions cannot be so negative one ma always have problems always complains this and that you need to try and then work it out keep complaining useless so you may choose chara teacher i choose usaha can i usaha chara the same i don't want chara i don't like chara i want usaha can my dear chara usaha sama saja Cara usaha langkah kaedah tindakan semua ni sinonim. Okay, you want to choose usaha also can because they are the same. So, we settle for your kata kunci, cara and also kesan. Apakah kesan ni? Kesan negatif. So, this is your kata kunci. Can I? Alright, so we settle the first question. The second question, anda telah mewakili represent this class dalam pertandingan syarahan sempena minggu keselamatan di sekolah. Anda telah memilih tajuk faktor-faktor peningkatan kemalangan jalan raya, faktor-faktor sinonim punca dan sebab. It means the reasons, what is the cause, what is the reasons that causes the case for the accidents to be increased. Tulis teks syarahan itu selengkapnya. Format syarahan. What is syarahan? Speech. So, what is the format for that? When you go up to the stage, can you be like, Oi, diam, dengar aku cakap. Aku nak bagi tahu sesuai itu. Ah, kamu, diam ya. Cannot, right? You cannot be like, okay, go up to the stage. Ah, diam ni, diam that. Cannot. So, you will need to be like, very polite. Yes, exactly. You will need to have order. Kata alu-aluan, right? Selamat sejahtera. Saya ucapkan kepada Tuan Pengurusi Majlis. And then, if there is a pretendingan, who you need to include? Pana hakimnya bijaksana dan bijaksana dan saksama, guru-guru yang berdedikasi dan rakan-rakan yang dikasihi. Then you say, who are you? Saya officially daripada, saya officially dari kelas bla bla bla, ini menyampaikan sebuah syarahan yang bertajuk, 
then write down this. Okay, this is the format. You cannot go up and then ask this person, damn, that person, damn, no. Okay, then after that, what is the topic and the kata kunci here? Very obvious because you really don't use what is your tajuk already. So your topic is about the peningkatan kemalangan jalan raya. This is the topic. How about the kata kunci? For kata kunci, is a factor factor. The reason exactly a list. So what is the causes and the reasons make it to increase? So we'll finish the TKKF. What is My dear, the workplace, the workplace, the workplace, the workplace, the workplace, which word? Ah, or this one? Ah? <laughs> Jared? Jared, you're which branch? Ah? I mean, I mean, I do assisting PDC students. Because I remember my Jared is from three Jareds. Is it? Yes, my from three Jareds and from four. From four, I got Jareds, right? Xiang Yi, are you good? All good? Oh, Lucas or Kananila. I was wondering where are you just now in the Mandarin class? Okay. Shall we finish? Uh? Okay. Have a look at your question three. So for question three, we finish up the question ones, finish up the question two. So right now we look at the question three. So just belakangnya ini is means that recently, kejadian. Oh yeah, I forgot. So today got prefect hands. My phone five also told me the same thing. Prefect hands two days, right? I mean two days and tomorrow. Yeah, because my phone five also told me the same things. Okay. Kejadian jenaya sering berlaku. Jenaya is means crime. Okay, jenaya is means crime. Huh? Sering berlaku di kawasan tempat tinggal. Peningkatan kes jenaya ini membimbangkan pelbagai pihak kerana meninggalkan impak negatif. Impak is means kesat. Okay, impak, negative impak. Nyatakan peranan masyarakat dalam menjamin keselamatan setempat. For this question, is there any format? No. Because the question that never sell you tulis tak syarahan, tulis laporan. No. Okay, whenever they never mentions any specific format up. Huh? So for this kind of karangans that without formats, we will have a category scope for them. It's called karangans pendapat or karangan fakta. Okay, we will call them either karangan pendapat or karangan fakta. Okay. And that, what is the kata kunci for this question then? It's peranan, masyarakat. Peranan is means the role. What is the role that plays? What is the tanggung jawab? What is the responsibility? Responsibility in order to make sure keselamatan setempat daripada kes jenayah. Okay, so basically, this one would be your kata kunci. And this one is your topic. Peranan is means rule. Chang Chang. So for this question, all three, we finish analyze the question TKKF. First thing first in your exam to analyze all the question. After you analyze the topic, kata kunci and format, then the next thing what you do is like to choose whichever you have the confidence to do it. So the first step is the TKKF. The next step what you need to do is basically the Rangka Karangan. Rangka Karangan, it means like a draft, a summary for your ECs. You need to think of the ECs, spend about five minutes to think of the EC, then only you start your Karangan. This step is very important just to make sure that you will not write out of scope. That's why it is really important. This is Ranka Karangan. Spend about five minutes to think of the easy. Jawapan, jawapan kamu boleh scan dekat QR code sana. Akan upload dekat QR code sana. Lepas, selepas seminar. Okay. Then after that, look at the next one. What is the next one right now? 
every time student TKK has to analyze the question, then to do your rangka karangan. After the rangka karangan, then you may start your show by writing the pendakubuan, isi dan penutup. So right now, I need you to screenshot the letters because I will show you on the techniques for each one. How are you going to write your pendakubuan? How are you going to write your isi and also penutup? Okay, so far, any question? If not, then let's move on now. So for pendahuluan, for isi and the penutup, let me introduce to you first. You will have three parts. The first one, opening. For the pendahuluan, the techniques we will always use is the T-Y-E-K. I will tell you what does this mean This acronym means, then after that's your EC. The EC here is the S-H-Y-E-K. Lastly is the penutup. So the penutup is KCH. Meaning to say four sentence, five sentence, three sentence. Okay. How that how, how do we apply that? Um, So this is it for the pendahuluan. Pendahuluan, T-Y-E-K, topic Y effect and the kata kunci. This is not included in the QR one. Okay, this is not included in the QR. I need to move up a bit. Then it's this one. Show the sample here. Okay. Have a look at this. So the TYEK topic Y effect and the kata kunci. T, it means like jelaskan topic. What does this mean like jelaskan topic? Our topic here, I will use the example of the first question. Okay, the first question is what? This one. Yang ni. So the topic, activity perlombaan haram, tulis surat, cara, kesat. So I will use the cara and this one later to show you the sample. Okay, so you see, huh? jelaskan topik. The topic is like the phenomena, what's happening about the perlembaan harams recently in the societies or maybe it's in around your homes area, the residential area. So over here, sejak belakangan ini recently, aktiviti perlembaan haram berlaku secara berleluasa. Berleluasa, it means getting more and more, semakin meningkat. Di tempat kawasan tinggal saya, then why? Jelaskan sebab berlakunya keadaan tersebut. Kebanyakan majority Kebanyakan yang terbabit dalam aktiviti yang kurang sihat ini made up of golongan remaja yang kurang mendapat perhatian daripada keluarga. Why? Because their parents very busy. Kesibukan ibu bapa mereka. Yang ni sebab berlakunya. Then E, effect. Jelaskan kesan jika perlembaan haram dibiarkan. What if you just like let it be? Then what happen? Kesannya. Keselamatan dan keharmonian masyarakat memang akan terjejas which means being damaged and also give a negative impact to our areas need. For example, maybe I just tell someone that, okay, let's go to KL at night. Then maybe they would think, oh, KL very dangerous, like, a lot of robber uh, law and then later got people snatch my back law, this law, that law. So this is the negative impact about that area. Nama kawasan tempat tinggal lah. Then after that, the last one, kata kunci. Kata kunci, this last sentence, which means you will need to copy again so kata kunci and the topics. The reason and the purpose is because. Next paragraph is your EC. So when you're writing out the EC, you are telling us about what is the kesan negative and what is the cara-cara yang boleh dilakukan untuk mengatasi masalah tersebut, right? So before you write to your teachers, let your teachers know the EC. Okay, what is the kesan negative? What is the cara? You give your teachers like a brief intro that, all right, right now I'm going to write about the is the cursor negative and also the chara. Then the next paragraph only you start up what is the 
cosine negative. What is the chariot? Okay, that's why you see, uh, your last sentence here, uh, it will be like just the root. Just the root, it means all it do. Kita perlu meneliti your kata kunci. Kesan negatif akibat aktiviti dan usaha. Then our topic here, aktiviti perlumbaan harap. Repeat your topics and the kata kunci in the last sentence. Then only you start up with your easy. Okay, take a picture for this one. I give you five seconds to take a picture for this one. Any question, please clarify with me in the chat box. Then I will move on to the next one, which is the EC. EC, S H Y E K. Five sentences and how you should write that. Five, four, three, two, one. Anything you want to ask? If no, then I will just proceed. Uh, if anything, please do ask me and clarify with me in the chat box. Yeah. Okay, next one. Next one, S-H-Y-E-K, what does it mean? It means like this, E-C, how, why, effect, and also conclusive. Why is it keep going down? Okay, the K here is conclusive yeah, for this one. Okay, the chanto. Here's a chanto. Okay. Help, look at this one. Just scroll it up for you. In sheet. Okay. As a Shui EK, tulis isi utama. So, I use the example of chariot. Chariot, chariot untuk mengatasi masalah, uh, untuk mengatasi activity perlembaan haram yang semakin berleluasa. So, this one is the chariot, ya. Yeah? Then, the first one to list EC utama. What is the EC utama here? Why am I writing the terms behind once? Because you are writing a letter, letter to pihak police. So, this is like you, okay? It's like you. Pihak tuan referring to the pihak police. So, pihak tuan boleh menubuhkan unit rondaan. EC utama here, menubuhkan unit rondaan. Okay, bagi memantau aktiviti perlumbaan di kawasan ini. How, how they can menubuhkan and how they... How they need to do so. Jika memberkas, after they menubuhkan, after they menubuhkan, if they arrest anyone. Jika memberkas sesiapa yang terlibat dalam kegiatan perlumbaan, harus apa? Mengenakan hukuman yang berat terhadap pesalah. Why? Why do they need to do so? Tindakan ini, mana tindakan ini perlu dilaksanakan supaya sesiapa yang terlibat dalam aktiviti tersebut berasa takut lepas tu tidak melakukan lagi. So this is the reasons why. Then what is the impact? Dengan ini, aktiviti perlembaan haram yang asyik mengganggu kehidupan penduduk dapat dibanteras, which means like being dihapuskan, okay, dikurangkan, like that. So this is the impact. So lastly, to ulang semula isi utama, isi utama, unit rondaan kan? Tegasnya, it means in short, the unit rondaan perlu ditubuhkan dengan secepat mungkin. This is like the ayat penegas like that. The conclusion is kind of like the ayat penegas like that. Okay, so this is how we do the SHYEK thingy here. Can I, can understand anything you want to ask? Take a picture for this one. Anything you don't know, you may clarify. Okay, five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. All right, so next, move on. The last one, which is the easy, uh, which is the penutup. 
So, papanood to. I can do in this way. Panuto KCH, which means that the, the first one is the I get conclusive. Since this is a closing, so you will have, you will need to conclude your topic. Let's have a look for this one. Okay. So, siapa penutup ah, KCH? Ayat konklusif untuk topik. Apakah topik kita untuk uh, soalan ini? Perlembaan haram, right? Aktiviti perlembaan haram. So, kesimpulannya, pihak tuan harus menitik beratkan. Menitik beratkan, it means like to focus on, pay attention, mementingkan. Kegiatan, it means aktiviti perlembaan haram ini. And also, actively take actions in order to membanteras. So, this is your... This one is your ayat konklusi. Okay. Then the C and H are cadangan and harapan. Cadangan is means a suggestions. For your karangan sepenutup, you will need to give a suggestions to someone's a pihak. So which means a character. You will need a watak. The watak, it can be like ibu bapa. It can also be like pihak kerajaan. It can also be like media masa, masyarakat. Who's also can. Okay. After that, why are you giving uh, suggestions to these kind of people and also to the peha? The reason is because you hope they would improve to become better. So the harapan here, it means a kesan positive. So you will have a charangan and a harapan. How are you going to connect your charangan and harapan together? By using kata hubung. For example, untuk uh, kerana supaya so, untuk it is like, untuk bagi demi, supaya and agar, they are the same. So, over here, selain pihak police, other than the police out, who is the water I use here is kami, we, excluding the pihak police. We as the ahli jawatan kuasa persatuan penduduk, AJK the committee out of the persatuan penduduk of the residential area, we will need to give full support, kerja sama, cooperations to the pihak police. Pihak tuan, whenever they carry out the cadangan-cadangan yang, uh, what's that? Usaha-usaha yang dicadangkan. Alright. What is the kesan positive so that the case can be reduced? So this is how I combine by using the kata hubung. Then the next one. Okay, another watak. Persatuan kami, same persons. But what we do right now, we will also need to Remind golongan ibu bapa. Sentiasa memantau bulatan sosial which is like keep an eyes on the social circles of the kids so that to make sure they will not get involved in this kind of activity. So we also using the angga. You may change to supaya if you don't want to use angga. Okay, there is it. Okay, so this is how we do the karangans. You just need the techniques then. You will have a directions, a guidelines for you to write your current out. Okay? Bele, any things you want to ask? No, 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 not only for Shara. What kind of the current lines you, you may also apply? Like, for example, if it's factor, then you still the S is the factor, man. Then maybe you, you, you would say how, how this, how this would become your factor. Why? Okay, why this would happen? Then the impact. Because of this factor, it causes what, it, what impacts. Then your conclus, uh, the conclusive, which is the ayat penegas. You need to like play around, depends on the question. Lah. Okay, the SHYK. This actually seem as, um, your school, what's the technique that your school use? Because in the textbook, it's the imbako. Basically, they are kind of similar. Okay, imbako. What is imbako ah, in case you don't know? Anyone do know what is imbaku? Kosana. Let me think ah, if it's kosana. You may also write a similar, not to say similar lah, it depends lah. Because if it's kosana, you can also write one lah. What is the kosana on top of this kosana? For me ah, um, okay. For me, for the questions, right? I mean in the... In the karangan umum, because sometimes they will have questions like menceritakan pengalaman anda. 
okay if it's for me i will definitely not choose the charita base the story base why the story base it is because that one thing you will need to construct your own story unless you have a relevant experience okay unless you have a relevant experience then that one is different because you have some things to refer but if you got no relevant experience which means you will need to like build out your own stories construct the own story so when it comes to story thingy, it is very easy that you will write out of topic. So I will not suggest my students to write story if you are not someone that is creative. And because this is a BM paper, if you are very good in BM, when you wanted to make your story sound interesting, you will need to know a lot of perkataan, the kosa, the vocabulary, especially the adjective to describe on the incidents or maybe the number. So the journey scatter and also the vocabulary you will need you will need to be very strong in it okay unless you tell me your bm is very strong as strong as your english then you want to write the story i'm okay with that okay you may go ahead if you are very good in writing story i will never stop you if you have the faith you have the confidence okay but if you are not that kind of people then i will never suggest my students to write story yeah? because story based questions very easy to write out of story out of, out of school okay and then your basics of BM need to be really great for that. Then, then if it's not story, then I have two more. Formative writings or the karangan pendapat. Basically, formative writings and karangan pendapat, they are the same. It's just that formative writing, they add on the formats for you only. So, if you know the format, then you may choose for that, okay? If you think that you wanted to write charot and not kasat, then you may choose for the format. So, example, for this question, it's about Chara and Kersan. Chara and Kersan, but it's a Surat Rasmi. This is Shara Han. This is about a facto. What if I do know the formats for Surat Rasmi? Surat Rasmi is kind of lot. Uh, then don't choose. Choose Shara Han. If you know Shara Han, or if you these two, you also don't know the format, then choose this one. No format. Format. Whenever there is format, there is three marks will be allocated through the format, okay? And yeah, teachers, only three marks, karangan, I got 30, like, three out of 30, 10% only can lah, I give them. But guys, let me tell you what, my dear. You see, uh, format is also considers the impressions marks, you know. When a teacher mark your paper, uh, they write surat rasmi. You do know the format, you ignore the format. Then it's very obvious that your teachers know you are not well prepared for exact. With this kind of concept, and then you go and your teachers go and mark your paper. God bless you, my dear. Okay? That's why if you don't know the format, don't choose that question. That one is very scary, but I don't think it will happen to, to, uh, to, to Catholic. Hmm. Yeah. Between Sharahan and Surada, of course I will choose Sharahan. The format is easier as compared if you want me to choose that. Mm, because Surat Rasmi, you will have a lot of a lot of like you know the, the, the address and then there is a title, Tajo. But if you are good in Surat Rasmi, the formats that is easy to write what Chara Kosan for that. Oh at least I come back. Huh? So can uh, you need to Note which format and also like which kind of question you have the confidence, especially the format. So please at least go and familiarize with all the formats because for your Karangan format, it will be the same until you form five, okay? So if you can put some efforts to memorize, remember all the formats at least one time, then yeah, when you go to form five, they'll always be the same. So no worries. Okay, at least I come back to you. So sorry for that. Get interrupted. What is Imbaku? Imbaku is a technique that shows in your textbook. The Karangan technique. This is the Imbaku. Imbaku. Isi mengapa bagaimana kesan ungkapan and penegah. So basically same as like the SHYEK. This is the technique from the textbook. Ah. So yang ni S H Y E K. I just know the ungkapan because I don't want you to waste your time go and memorize the ungkapan in which you also don't know what kind of the topic and tema is coming out. Purayan is very important. Okay, so this is an SHYEK. But the imbako is in a Malay term. Can I at least, can I understand? Uh? Imbako. 
Okay, come move on. So any questions for your karangan? If no, I will spend the rest of the time to your kertas satu. Kertas satu, tiga bahagian. Okay? No, yeah? Let's move on. Okay, the next one. Um, let me see what this is. Huh? Okay. Yes, my dear. Remember, Nicole, remember, it is compulsory to do the numberings for Surat Kiriman Rasmi. Compulsory. And make sure that after you write the number, two finger space only you start. Okay? This is compulsory. This is part of the format. That's why I say there is a lot of things you need to take notes for Surat Kiriman Rasmi. What is the format? I mean, like the, 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 the format that most troublesome one, Surat Kiriman Rasmi is one of it. And resume. Mm, resume. Resume, I think you will learn it in SPM. Resume and Shrek can remind me. But go and remember. Yes, it will help up to you from five. Okay, so right now look at this one. This one is also Kertas Dua. Kertas Dua, Kertas Dua. But this is another tema. Remember, I told you for this seminar, we have two different tema. One is the Keselamatan. The other one is the Sektor Pelancongan. So this one you may go through yourself. Answer you may get from the QR code. Anything if you need extra help, please text me. Hmm, Lucas. Okay, this is a very good question. Huh? Do we need to space two fingers for the first paragraph of a normal essay? The answer is yes. Actually, for the ulasan, for the karangans, all the things, you will need to space two finger space in the first paragraph. But your school, there is two different answers. Some teacher yes, some teachers no. Remember the days we do the ulasan, like last week we do the ulasan. I'm like this week, like week three. My students, some of the students told me that their teachers already told them the Wednesday class are no need to space two finger space when we are writing out three paragraphs for ulasan. There memang other person tell me some things like this. But some students tell me we need to. So you go and double check with your teacher. I mean like your BM teacher. Then you tell me what is the patterns of your teachers. By right, we need to. Even in SPF, you need to. Okay? All the paragraph, all the startup, two space. Okay? Space of two fingers. Huh? I told you all same things. Huh? I told my students the same things like selain itu, seterusnya, ah, seterusnya, no. selain itu, bukan itu sahaja di samping itu. Even the students, even the teachers from the same school, they will give me different answer. Some of them tell me three. Di samping itu, tiga patah perkataan. But actually, in SPM, in general, it's counted as one word. Yeah. So, I will tell my students, if your teachers are very particular, so in school exam, you just follow their patterns. Okay? But in SPM, follow in general. Okay? All right. Come to the kata satu. Kata satu bahagian A, A, B, C, D. I will not go through the A, B, C, D with you. Are. After I go through the A, B, C, D, I cannot do the bahagian B, bahagian C with you already. So this one as your revisions. Where you can get the answer, QR. Normally, you will have like uh, perkataan banyak makna or maybe banyak perkataan banyak makna and then like a kosa kata. Then after that, the tata bahasa. Okay, this is the part. So you do it yourself. Okay, come to the B. Bahagian B, pemahaman. Bahagian B, pemahaman, soalan satu sistem bahasa. So, for the first question, remember to read the uh, to read the arahan first. Huh? So, the first one for this is your kesalahan ejaan, spelling error. They ask you to gariskan. <coughs> gariskan kesalahan ejaan, lepas tu tulis jawapan pada rang yang diberikan. And then, Tidak perlu menyalin ayat itu semula. Because when I do it in the class, there is students to recopy the sentences. So very mm. obvious, they never read the instruction. Instructions very important. Okay. If it's in exam, how do you do this? Example. This one is the kesalahan ejaan. Mataria is wrong. It should be material. M-A-T-E-R-I-A-L. Yes, same as English. Okay, no problem. You can see the, I mean, like you can watch the replay on YouTube. So for this one, in exam, how are you going to write that? Okay, you may write in this way. To become. Or 
your direct right. But I usually will suggest my students to do it this way in case your teachers are someone that is pattern. Okay? Let them know which one is the kesilapan and then the pembetul one. Then after that, the next one also the same. This one is kesalahan bahasa. So for kesalahan bahasa, like what I told you just now, di setiap minggu, pada setiap minggu, it's very obvious pada setiap minggu. So for the first one, what the, oh, like this, ah, you mean uh, change this one to, to this one. Ah. Is it? Ah, can also. So I tell you, um, you need to follow if your teachers have any specific requirements or any specific preference. So you will need to follow that because your paper is still marked by your school teachers. It is different by SPM. SPM is different, okay? SPM is as a minimum to mark the paper. But if it's your school exam, then you will need to follow your teacher's preference. If they got specific, uh, specifically mentioned to you, uh, then yes, <coughs> okay? Please do so. <clears throat> okay. Then come to this one. Satu kesalahan bahasa. Internet merupakan wadah komunikasi, which is the medium secara. Yang paling penting setelah utamanya pada golongan remaja. Pada golongan remaja, definitely is wrong. To the youngster, kepada golongan remaja. So like Jared, your teacher asked you to do so. So you just change to pada. Make it become kepada. Why they write the equal sign? Equal sign doesn't it means like the other thing, isn't it? But just follow whatever your teachers tell you. Okay, you may write in this way. You may write in adro. Oh, so can. Okay, then come to C. C is the peri basa. So for the peri basa, I will not go through with you. You can try and then get the answers from the QR. The reasons why I go through one once for the kesalahan agent answer, kesalahan bahasa, is to show you that how you should present your answers during your exact full stop. And then for the pemahaman, okay, the pemahaman parts, one, two, three, SP or SPM, okay, yours is three questions, SPM is four questions. Now, look at the question now. Every time when you do the pemahaman question, first thing first is to read the questions that only you go back to the particulars so that you would know what is asking for the, uh, by the question. So for this one, berdasarkan bahan satu dan bahan dua, tanggung jawab ibu bapa terhadap anak-anak termasuklah the new value answer. But the questions already tell you berdasarkan bahan satu dan bahan dua, right? It means that from the particulars, from the bahans, you would be able to get the answer. So by right, these two marks, you should get it. And then, mengapakah pengawal perubatan mengesyaki kanak-kanak lelaki yang meninggal dunia itu diderak oleh ibunya seperti yang terdapat dalam bahan dua? Meaning to say, same thing. You are able to get the answers from your petikan. Okay? Tiga ni. They give you a scenario maybe. Okay? They just give you a scenario or just give you a statement. Sekiranya anda seorang ibu atau bapa, sekiranya if you are a mother or a father. Bagaimanakah cara-cara anda untuk memastikan anak-anak mendapat kasih sayang yang mencukupi? This one is kebat. Kebat kemahiran berfikir ada setinggi. It means that your own ideas, own opinion. So for this one, what you need to do is you will need to think your own idea for months. There is no definitely correct or definitely wrong answer because this is kebat. You need to be relevant, okay? Then you can get this. Okay, but very, very easy to score. Let me double check the question. Huh? Oh. Over here, they never say the perbezaan. If it's like, they never mention berdasarkan bahan satu dan bahan dua, maybe there is a persamaan. You need to look through that. If it's a persamaan, similarity, then you can just say berdasarkan bahan satu dan bahan dua, then you just write it up. If it's a persamaan. What if it's a perbezaan? Difference, okay? It's not a similarity, then you will need to split it. In the petikan satu, what happened? Petikan dua, what happened? Okay? Kata satu is, 
<gasps> we mix it up, ah? I think yes, eh. If it's like that. Yeah, eh. Later, I double check. Never mind. Later, I tell them. Thank you, Alice. Thank you very much. Okay. So, we come to the novel. Ah. So, for the novel, what is in your tingkatan do? What the novel is this one? Okay, what you learn ah, basically is wilaya persekutuan and nilai and putrajaya, they, sh they share the same novel. So, we have four different zones, Mat Sarawak, Johor, all these places that were different. Since there is a pelehan, so whenever you are answering for the novel question, please make sure because they will give you a general question and then based on the novels that you study. So, what you need to do right now is. Wait up, wait up. Where is that? I want to double check. I want to show you the. Okay, is this. Okay. So for this one. <laughs> is it your teachers got mentioned uh, my form two yeah 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 my form two got sent me nah 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 see ah uh, see shit students your friend told you ah uh. so you try ah uh. answers get from the QR code uh. Oh, my dear. My dear, my dear. Someone's correct me. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Felicia also told me the same things. It's your CHS, uh, synopsis, persoalan, and tema. Either ones will come out. Synopsis, synopsis, very long, me. Okay, la. Synopsis, okay, la. So don't just focus on persoalan. Uh. Why? Wow, you guys already do all the analysis, is it? Okay, no matter how. <laughs> But no matter how, uh, my dear, the first sentence, everything I write in the red color ones, is a compulsory for you to be included in your novel questions. If you never write this out, you never write the names of the novels and also the panelists of the novel, your teacher has the right to not give you any marks, not even one. Even if you write until very good, what is the person? Alana, wow, you give the pretty word also, the chanto also. But yeah, okay. My teacher only let us do persoalan. Hmm, but the rest also tell me the same thing. Well, synopsis, tema, and persoalan. My students also tell me this one. I mean for CHS, ah, CHS, ah, okay? This is what I got from my students. Ah. I never do any Ramalan, ah, so I get from my students. Ah. If not, this three come up, then you don't school me. Ah. See what is persoalan. You pray hard. Ah. You pray hard and see. <laughs> you pray hard and see. Okay, so remember, uh, this one, uh, for sure, uh, must compulsory. Okay, since they say, hi, you so good, man, you. Since they say, tiga preso alam, uh, right? So for this tiga preso alam, right? You need to remember for all the novel questions, you will need to include the bukti, which is the preistiwa dalam novel kamu as a supporting. Okay, this is compulsory, yeah, please. Preistiwa and also contoh. Or else you will never get a mark. So tiga preso alam, tiga preistiwa dan bukti. Okay, <laughs> this one, remember this sentence, very, 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 very important. Okay, then the last one, I have 15 minutes. Yes, I think I can finish. Last part, bargain C. Bargain C is we talk about the rumusans and also the ringkasans. Basically, after I go through the rumusans, then ringkasan is very easy. For sure, I mean, like, I know you know what is ringkasan, huh? but as for rumusans and ringkasans, basically, they are the same. Okay, but again, since you will just need to answer one question, what is the difference of the rumusans and the ringkasan is that ringkasan only have isi, tak ada pendahuluan, tak ada penutup. Rumusan, you have pendahuluan, isi, penutup. And that. For your rumusan, they will just tell you about the words limit. They will never tell you about the tajuk anymore, what they want you to find. Not anymore. Last time, yes, but right now they change it. They will never tell you. But if it's a ringkasan, ringkasan is what? If it's a ringkasan, they will tell you 
what is the kata kunci? What do I want you to look from? Look for from the petikan. Okay, this is ringkasan. Rumusan tak ada tetapi ringkasan ada. And let's come back to this one up. For rumusan, let me tell you what you need to take notes lah. What is this leh? Like I told you just now for rumusans, we will have three paragraph mah. So we will start up with the pendakuluan, isi and also the penutup loh. Right. Okay. Then after that, pendakuluan, what is the purpose of you having the pendakuluan? Because in the question, the arahan the soalan they will never tell you anymore what is the kata kunci that you will need to get from the petikan. So what happened is after you read through the entire petikan, you will need to find out what is this entire petikan they're trying to deliver? So for the penakuluans, you need to tell them the kata kunci. Whether they're talking about the faktor, kesan, cara, or whatsoever. And also your topic. Plus up together, which is the tajuk. That is given in the ringkasan, but no longer in rumusan. And then for the isi. Isi, just a point lah. That is the penutup. Okay. So whenever you are finding for your kata kunci, this is the techniques you may apply to. The guideline, the factor, cara, usaha, and kesan. Ah. Kesan, it can be a kesan positive and a kesan negative. If you want to remember the KFC, also can. Kesan, factor, cara. Okay, as long as you remember, this is for factor, cara, usaha, and kesan. As long as you can remember, Jamie, I don't mind. Okay, as long as you can remember, ah. It's faktor cara usaha kesan. Okay. Then when it comes to the penutup. Penutup which is like the endings, right? So the penutup for your rumusan. Kesimpulannya. You will have a watak. Tindakan. Kesan positif. What does it mean? For example. Let us see an example for the activity perlumbaan haram. <laughs> Sorry. Activity perlumbaan haram that we, that we learned just now for the karangan. So maybe for the Kesimpulan, the penutup, so you can write for the rumusan. It is like kesimpulannya, uh, pihak polis or the pihak berkuasa harus menguatpasakan undang-undang agar pesalah berasa takut dan tidak melakukan lagi. So, this is the tindakan and the kesan positif. Okay? So, I give you a template on how you should write the rumusan. Just now, my class conducted in Mandarin, ah. Then my student told me, teacher, because it's more easier than no need the pendakulans, but not just the easy. Yeah. Because it's more easier as compared. But when you go to SPM, from 4 and from 5, Rumusa is a compulsory question. So no matter how, you will need to do that. Okay, so this is a template on how you should do your Rumusa. Rumusa ini membincangkan, let's say, I just by the example uh, just now. Uh, the kesan negative and also the cara charas for the activity perlumbaan haram. So for this one, maybe I would say, rumusan ini membincangkan kesan negatif dan cara charas untuk mengatasi masalah uh, cara charas untuk mengatasi masalah perlumbaan haram. Okay, so this is a tajuk. That after that, antara kesan negatif is what? Am I correct? Oh, I should choose only one. Kesan negative or the cara. Okay, there will be no two. Only one. So, rumusan ini membincangkan kesan negative yang didatangkan oleh aktiviti perlumbaan harap. Antara kesan negatif antara kesan negatif yang didatangkan oleh aktiviti perlumbaan harap termasuklah dan yang isi 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then after that, the kesimpulan. Yeah. Kesimpulannya, pihak polis, pihak berkuasa perlulah membuat pasukan undang-undang agar pesalat berasa takut dan tidak akan melakukannya. Okay, so this is how we do the rumusan. Fusak. Roughly like this. Huh? And then remember, after you dance, one thing is very important. You need to count the words limit. Can, boleh faham. So take a picture for this one. After that, I will go through with you the last one, which is the ringkasan. Rumusan, how many paragraph? Three paragraph. Ah, remember ah.
finish that. If it's finished, then let's just continue. What's this man? Okay, so look at this one. Your rinkasan. Basically, your rinkasan and rumusan, they are the same. Your rinkasan is just this part. Okay, your rinkasan is just this part. <laughs> okay, your rinkasan is just this part up. Huh? So right now, let's take a picture for your rinkasan. This is your rinkasan, right? Um, rinkasan, how many paragraph? Only one paragraph. Okay, this one. How many ECs for your rinkasan? Huh? Um, five to six as a minimum. So it's usually like five to seven like that. Why like? Rikasan is also 15, 15 marks, one five. So usually it's last time um, EC is about 10 marks. So it's like five EC. Then the rest, another five marks, it will go to the Bahasa. But I got one real life scenario and real case, which is my Kajang students. Last time my Kajang students, he writes about five ECs and actually all the ECs, they are correct. All the ECs, they are correct. Bahasa wise also very good. But the teachers don't want to give full marks for the EC because the teachers say, I want you to write six EC, not just five. Okay, that's why the teachers never give the two marks for the EC. So what happened is, if your teachers got mentions about minimums like six EC like that, then yes. So I will always suggest my students to be safe, write five EC. I mean, to be safe, write six EC. Okay, to be safe. And then for your ringkasan, that is two type. Uh, what does it what does it mean that it's two type? Pata perkataan. It can be like equals and less than 80. And it can also be like 80 to 100. That is two type. So you will need to read the arahan carefully. The arahans will tell you which one. Okay, the arahan will tell you which one. And then if you have the capacity, pertikans give you up to like 7, 8, and 9 EC. Teachers, can I write all 9 ECs into my ringkasan? Yes, you may do so, but you just need to take care of the words limits. Cannot write more than the limit. You can write all the easy inside. Your teachers will not do that if it's wrong. Okay. And then, i show you a sample. Basically, this is like the easy parts for your, for your room side. Ding, 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 ding. And then, that is only one, two, three, four. Penanda wacana given. Satu isi, satu ayat. Jadi gunakan penanda wacana gabung semua ayat. Lepas tu, untuk ringkasan kamu, hanya ada isi, tak ada huraian, tak ada contoh. Maksudnya, kamu hanya boleh guna penanda wacana yang untuk menjelaskan isi sahaja. Apakah penanda wacana yang digunakan untuk isi sahaja? Sini ada 1, 2, 3, 4. Which means, just the rule, it means only itu masuk, so you cannot use. Because just the rule is used to describe. It's used for kurayat, so you cannot use. Contohnya, tamsunya, all this cannot use because this one is for contoh. Then I give you extra three more. In total seven for this one for sure is correct for ECR. Ya. Tambahan pula. Di samping itu. Bukan itu sahaja. Okay. And then the notes that is mistake for the format part. So sorry, it's the tempo, the timing. Uh, just now at least got remind me. For your paper one is one and a half half hour. Then paper two is one hour. That the ballet already. Is it? Wait, wait, wait. Let me check. Let me check. Da, 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 da. Yes, paper one is one and a half hours. Paper two is one hour. That the ballet already. It's kind of difficult for you to do all in one hours for paper one. 
So remember, uh, paper one is one and a half, paper two is one hour. Okay, do I need to put back to the back of the Normally, uh, you just start with like antara. Antara cara untuk, you see, uh, antara cara untuk, antara cara untuk three words. Terdapat pelbagai cara untuk four words. So you will need to try to minimize as many words as you can so that you can write it for easy. So you can start like this way. Antara cara untuk, then blah, 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 blah. Then full stop, seterusnya, then you just write out the subject. What is the subject? If it's a person, if it's a charis untuk uh, mengatasi, then you can say, uh, seterusnya, who can do that? And then, or you can say that, uh, Aktiviti perlumbaan haram dapat diatasi dengan what is the easy, the subject. Make it a complete sentence and okay, ready. What does tegasnya mean? Tegasnya, tuntasnya, it means like in short. Tegasnya, tuntasnya, it means in short. That one is for penutup. Okay, that one is for penutup. So cannot use it for easy. Definition ready, is it? Hajinfo, I don't know. Tegasnya, yes, at least tegasnya is means like in short. Until what time? Uh? Until now. Actually, I want to tell you that, okay, basically, so we have finished all the things like for this seminar. So if you've got anything you want to ask me, then you may clarify with me in the chat box. If not, then we should finish. Cikgu ada di mana cawangan? Ada dekat Gasing, ada dekat Damansara Jaya, Lepas tu USJ dan juga Sri Petalik. Bye bye Shawi. Tapi ada dalam bahasa English hanya US, eh, USJ from tu. Oh USJ from tu saya tak ajak. Hanya Dhamma Sarajaya. Kerana Sri Petalik dan juga Gasing ni, I ada dalam bahasa Mandarin. Hmm. I got teach Gasing much God lah. Uh, my class is on Wednesday morning. From tu right? Yeah, Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning is a Mandarin conducted. Gasing, I teach Mandarin conducted. If it's an English conducted, then it's Damansara Jaya. Uh, every Thursday. Online also got uh, my online from two Mandarin is a morning class. If it's an English conducted, then it's Wednesday night. Wednesday night, night 10. Yeah. So the rest, if you got question, then you ask me. Uh. If you got no question, then bye-bye. Bye-bye.